John chapter 10, I'll read from verse 25 to 30. Jesus answered, I told you, but you don't believe. Everything I have done has been authorized by my Father. Actions that speak louder than words. You don't believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep recognize my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them the real and eternal life. They are protected from the destroyer for good. No one can steal them from out of my hand. The father who put them under my care is so much greater than the destroyer and the thief. No one could ever get them away from him. I and the Father are one heart and mind. The Lord bless the reading of his holy word in Jesus' name. You know, a lot of times we talk about faith. We talk about, oh, as Christians, um, we are God's children. Yes, we are, because as many as believed him, to them he gave power to be called sons of God, even them that believed in his name. However, can we say we are God's children? Can we say we are God's sheep if we don't listen to his voice? And can we hear him if we don't know his voice? Because um, one of the things that you will find is that first and foremost for me to believe in someone I must know that person I must be able to recognize the person's voice I must be able to say yeah this person that is speaking I know his worth I know what he will do I know what he can do then I believe in him There is, unfortunately, in Christendom today, the lack of training ourselves to know the voice of Jesus, to know the voice of God, to be able to recognize the voice of God. Unfortunately, there is the popular saying that says, the voice of the people is the voice of God, so we tend to follow what people say, what people do, rather than really listening for God's voice. So, for instance, Elijah had done a great work. Uh, Then he got scared, and he went to hide in a cave, and God came and showed up, said, hey, what are you doing here? Then God said, go stand out, and I'm going to speak to you. Then um, there was... I don't know, I can't remember the order in which it came. There was a strong, mighty rushing wind. There was a loud noise. There there was hot earthquake. There was fire. Then there was a still small voice. In following people, there is tendency to think that it is noise that indicates the voice of God or that it is what other people do that implies or tells you what God is saying you should do. No. We must start to learn to listen to, to listen for God's voice, being able to recognize it. So, um, The first question you want to ask yourself is, can you tell the difference between the voice of God and your own voice? The voice, your own voice and the voice of God. Because a lot of times we speak and we hear an echo or the echo of our voice 
and we say, oh, the echo I've, uh, I've heard is God speaking to me. Or my voice may sound so much like my dad's that when I speak, I start to think that it is my dad that is speaking. Can you really tell what the voice of Satan is? Well, it is not important. That is not the most important thing because the primary thing is when I know the voice of the Good Shepherd, I then know that every other voice is the one that I, I should not listen to. In the passage that we read, Jesus said, the voice of another, the sheep will not follow. So there is the voice of one that I must learn to know, to recognize, and that is all that matters for me to follow. The voice of the world, the things that men say, the things that we do, then becomes of little importance. The sad thing is that we focus so much, so much on the voice of something else that we listen and we get carried away by all the different voices that we hear around us. Jesus is challenging us. The friends, if you are my sheep, know my voice and follow my voice alone. If I ask the kids, then I said, close your eyes. And I got the parents to speak. It's very likely that it is the kids that belong to the parents that speaks that will quickly say, hey, it's my mom or it's my dad. Like what happened with them um, earlier? When, oh yeah, that's my mom's voice. So if I started to speak and I said, Hi, Elliot, this is your mom, Sarah. She'll go, no. Nah. <laughs> or if I were to call and go, hey, Travis, this is Jim. Like, no, that's not my dad. That is an impersonator. Do we have a relationship with God to the level where you know his voice because without that we become like Isaac who was who thought he was talking to Esau whereas it was Jacob that was speaking and every time as Isaac was deceived that is the same way we fall into deception when we cannot tell the difference between the voice of Esau and the voice of Jacob, when we cannot tell the difference between the voice of God and the voice of the world. The voice of another, they will not follow. If I don't know God's voice, very, very, very simply, first, I will live in disobedience to him. Without the knowledge of God's voice, I will be living in disobedience to him. And why is that? It doesn't matter to me who is speaking. Because I don't know if it is the person who has authority over my life or not. In Matthew chapter 11, verses 16, through to 19, Jesus said, but to what will I liken this generation? It is like children sitting in marketplaces 
and calling to their companions. They said, we played flute to you, you did not dance. We mourned to you, you did not lament. John came drinking, neither, drink, neither eating nor drinking, and you say he has a demon. The son of man, Jesus came, eating and drinking, say, hey, he's a gluten, a wine biber, friends of tax collectors and sinners. Wisdom is justified in her children. You cannot respond to God's leading. You cannot follow God's guidance without knowing his voice. If I know God's voice, then he says, come, I come. He says, go, I go. If I don't know his voice, he says, come, say, who is that? Or who are you? Or what do you mean? But if you know that, yeah, this is your father, this is your loving father that is saying, go do. It is easier to go, yes, I will. Without knowing God's voice, we stray often from his grace and his protection. Because God will lead us always where he is. And where God is, though the circumstances and situations may be very dangerous and filled with perils, where God is, his grace and his protection is always available and enough to keep us. When I don't know his voice, I don't go where he, where he is. I don't follow his steps. I don't move along with him. The disciples, they went and woke Jesus up because they thought that the boat was going to capsize and they were all going to perish. Said, Master, carest not thou that we perish? And what did Jesus say to them? Why are you sissies? If I can use that word. Why are you so frightened? Why are you so fearful? Why, how come you don't have faith? Without knowing God's voice, you cannot have faith. Because it takes hearing to believe. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 14, it says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how will they hear unless someone tells them? Without knowing God's voice, we run the risk of following the enemy. Without knowing God's voice, we run the risk of following the enemy. Because Jesus said, the voice of another they will not follow. Now, we find it easy to look in the scriptures and wonder how come those people did not believe Jesus? How come the guys that went to church regularly, the Pharisees, the scribes, you know, they did many more righteous things than we did. How come they did not believe Jesus? That's because they did not know the voice of God. So they listened more to the voice of the world, the voice of their tradition, the voice of their fleshly desires. Were they morally right people? Yes, they were. 
They listen to the voice of their cultures. Were they sinful people? By the standard of the world, no. By the standard of God, yes. Because they will not listen to, neither will they obey the one and only God. So then, how do I recognize the voice of God? Is it something that, oh, I know it, and I just go away. Um, the people that knew what my voice sounded like, I'll say 10 years ago, and did not live with me or anything like that. If I spoke and they did not see my face, they may think, yeah, that voice is familiar, but not quite certain. To know the voice, to recognize God's voice, that means being his sheep indeed must be a people that studies his word. And in Psalm 19, I'll read from verse 7, it says, The law of the Lord is perfect. It transforms, it converts the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. It makes wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right. It brings rejoicing to the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure. It enlightens the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold? Yes, more than fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. In, in the study of the word of God, we get to recognize his voice. God's voice is not just about its sounding, the tonal qualities. It is also about its mannerism. So someone that has lived with my brother for a long time comes out here and sees me talk in a certain manner. And he goes, oh, are you TJ's brother? We get to know the fullness of God's voice as we study his word. Because therein, we get to know the kinds of words he uses. Now, you know someone who, when he's talking, he says, and this is the courage. Yeah, yeah, if you listen a lot, he doesn't know he says that. But when he's speaking, when he's teaching or preaching, he says, and this is the courage that we have. Yeah, that is Bishop Victor. Um, so, to know the mannerism of God, we must spend time in his word. John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. So that which has been with God from the beginning, Jesus Christ, your knowing him through the study of his word helps you to identify in its fullness, the, the voice of God, so that if Pastor B e. came and said something that is not the voice of God, you know that he, he Pastor B, e. has just spoken. And you know not to follow that. A lot of times, 
And when you read John chapter 10, the passage we read, again, a lot of times we say because pastor has spoken, so we should go and do it. No, actually the Berean Christians, the, why are they more fear-minded than those of Thessalonica? Because when Paul spoke, they went back to search and confirm whether what Paul has spoken was according to the word of God. Friends, we cannot listen, we cannot take the voice of another man as the voice of God. However, we become so lazy that we are not willing to show, to study, to show ourselves approved of God as a workman who need not be ashamed. Would rather have the commendation of man and ignore the voice of God. I pray God will help us and bring us to that place where we'll spend time diligently in his word. To recognize voice, God's voice, you must commune with him often and more frequently. You must spend time with him in prayer. It is as you speak and listen to him, as he speaks back to you, that you get over time to know his voice. There are people that even if they, if they had a cold and they start to speak, you know, oh, this is the person that is speaking. Why? Because you have the connection with them to the point that every impurity that the cold brings to their voice, you are able to sieve out. To recognize God's voice, we must spend time fellowshipping with other sheep, other of his followers. The writer of Hebrew encouraged us, said, let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the fellowshipping, the assembling of ourselves together, but exhorting one another so much more as you see the day approaching. I want us to just bow our heads and I want us to pray. 